Yo guys, welcome to the Blue Podcast with me, Tom and Ben. How you doing, mate? Good, thanks. Um, and today we've got Lucas Canada uh, to talk to us about rugby and uh, other other such things in his company. Um, how you doing? Hey, but Tom, nice to meet you. So do you, Ben. Nice to meet you as well. Um, before we get into anything as well, do you want to kind of, you're, you're probably best to do this, just explain to our viewers kind of what it is you do and, and have done in the past, maybe just a brief, brief rundown. Yeah, sure. I mean, I, I do wear many hats today, but I'm uh, currently a professional rugby player uh, at Sala Rugby. Uh, it's a little town in the southwest of France. And I also uh, lead uh, our company in here, which is Unicorn Incubator, a startup incubator accelerator. Uh, those are the uh, two things I, ju I juggle uh, every day, basically. Cool. Fair enough. Well, I'm sure we'll get into, into both of those areas uh, as we get onto this podcast. But uh, before we get started, uh, if you guys who are watching know anyone that would also enjoy watching our podcast, please do share it and get it out there as much as possible. And also do check out our new merch line, which has obviously dropped uh, on, on Saturday. Uh, we got lots of new stuff for you and all that. Well, uh, I've been trying to get a rugby podcast sorted for this channel for a very, very long time. And then it kind of fell on my lap uh with with you lucas um <laughs> <It's great. laughs> i don't know if uh, it's just great for me great for me I've, I've played rugby my entire life pretty much um cool but uh yeah I, I stopped about two years ago due to injuries and stuff um what happened but well it was more kind of in the space of a year and a half uh three well two concussions then knocked out with a concussion and then put my shoulder kind of mm. in about a year and a half and that was kind of when i realized i might take a step back from rugby and then maybe do some other sports that uh that aren't killing me slowly <laughs> to be honest <laughs> which is which is a shame because I've, I've loved rugby my entire life um so when, when would you say you kind of got into into doing rugby or playing rugby? i started i started when i was five mm -hmm. uh so when i was a very little kid um actually my mom just took me uh, to my home club back in argentina and uh since then i just I mean, very much loved it. And uh, I've always been a sports guy. I've also tried uh, football. I've tried uh, martial arts. Uh, but eventually, uh, everything came back to rugby. And uh, that's the sport I love. It, it is my passion. And uh, yeah, I mean, my dream was to always be to become a, a professional rugby player when I was young. So, yeah. Fair enough. Um, <laughs> ben, you got a question? Cool, yeah, yeah. Um, so, so you, like you're saying, you're a, a professional uh, rugby player, uh, but what was it like, sort of, that transition from um, sort of amateur to professional? Uh, how was that? Well... On one hand, it was a smooth transition, I would say, because uh, I had my mind set it up uh, that I wanted to play professional rugby when I was younger. And uh, so I was doing as much as I could to get that opportunity. Mm. Um, so I was training almost, I mean, not as a professional, but I was training pretty hard. I was mm. getting myself ready for that uh, opportunity to come. And um, so that made the, the transition a lot easier. And then uh, on the other hand, I had to, I'm from Argentina, so I had to come to France actually to, to get this uh, done because back home there were no professional teams at that time. And um, so, but again, it, since it was my dream and I always wanted that, that made my uh, decision a lot easier. Uh, actually, uh, I think it was my agent that called me one morning uh, after we've discussed a little bit for, for one week. And he called me one day at 10 in the morning and he said, hey, uh, you ready to ready to go? I said, yes, of course. OK, uh, you've got your, t your plane ticket tonight. I was like, wow, OK, that's quick. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> so I just dropped everything that I was doing, packed uh, and flew over. So, yeah, pretty intense, but. A good thing and uh again when you do what you love when you do what you like the most everything's easier mm. true well, how, how old are you when you actually moved to france 25 so like six years ago 
Fair enough. What, what was that like moving to France? Obviously, moving to a, I mean, a whole other continent. And uh, what was that like for you? Well, there's two sides of that. Basically, there's, I mean, language is a big barrier. I didn't speak French when I came here first. Uh, I slowly learned. But uh, yeah, and the culture is a bit different, but uh, at least is comes from Latin, so mm. it does have similarities. But of, co of course, coming to a new country, not knowing anyone, because you, I mean, whole family and friends are back home, uh, it's tough. But on the other side, I, I was lucky because when you go into a rugby club, you do have already you have 40 friends that come to you, the club that helps. So it's, mm. I mean, it's a good balance, actually. Mm. Cool. Well, you, you do speak, was it French, English and Spanish, am I right? Yeah, that's correct. Did you know English before you went to, to France or did you learn that as well whilst, whilst in France? No, I've learned uh, English when I was at school. Uh, so back in Argentina, uh, I was lucky to go to a bilingual school. So that mm. made things easier. The mm. good thing about rugby clubs and rugby players is that there's always someone that speaks two languages and eventually you, you end up uh, getting a, a good translation. <laughs> and, well, today I, I became that person uh, today, but it was someone else for me back in the day. Ah, cool. Um, so like you're saying, um, so uh, in terms of that transition, you're saying uh, like you um, we're already putting in a lot of work, like loads of work, so the transition was easier. Um, like, what are, you, what are you doing now? Sort of like keep yourself at that top level, sort of to you know keep your fitness up and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, I mean, it's always important to keep uh, yourself in shape. I would say general shape. So, do you think there's which? three key aspects for that you you should be able to train well of course uh to recover well and sleep well and uh, then it, uh, there's the nutrition aspect that people should be taking care of i mean mm. those if you got those three covered you're pretty much done in terms of being in shape right mm. today i'm 30 years old and I, I'm, I can still run i'm not that bad uh, <laughs> I play wings, so you know, Tom, I, I need to be running quick, um, yeah. which I still do, luckily. If not, I will probably be over, but uh, <laughs> yeah, I still have a couple more years in these legs to keep running. Cool. Mm. Mm, no, yeah. Um, I mean, I played uh, I mean, I played all over the place uh, in the backs. <laughs> uh, started off as a full back slash winger if, if one of our wingers was injured. And then I slow, kind of, I slowly moved into inside. So what was about, what was that? I was about twelve when I moved to inside centre, and then mm -hmm. I was uh, fifteen slash sixteen when I moved to uh, to fly half. So uh, yeah, no, it's kind of uh, I love being a back. Would you say you, you love being a back? We prefer being a back to a, to a forward. One hundred percent. I mean, <laughs> it's obvious, right? <laughs> I, it's I don't obvious. even need to explain why, but. Uh, for people that don't really know, I mean, they do the hard work and we get the, the rewards, basically. Mm, pretty much, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> but, uh, one of the things I, I do love, love about rugby, and I keep saying it, is that uh, it's probably the only sport that I know of that anyone can play. So no matter if you're fat or thin or you're tall or short, I mean, there's a position and there's a job for you at a rugby team. That's one of the things I love the most about rugby because you need to be able to uh, take each of uh, each of the players' uh, skills and put it into a team that works. And uh, that relationship with business, which I'm doing today, uh, it's the perfect combination. I mean, that, that synergy and connection between one and the other, it's perfect. That That's what happens at, at real life, at real teams, at real companies. Uh, so yeah, I enjoy that part about rugby a lot. No, yeah, I, I agree with that as well. And having played football since I stopped playing rugby, you do kind of, I think a lot of people would agree with the, there's a lot fewer individual, you has to be a lot fewer individuals in rugby because if certain, like all the positions are so important all over the pitch, if one person's not doing enough for the team, then, then you kind of, the whole team won't work as well. Whereas with football, you can have that, individual winger or, or, or 
10 who can just then change the game like that. Obviously, you still get that in rugby, but there's a lot more teamwork uh, I found in rugby, which obviously then does relate to your professional side, uh, business side now, which is, uh, yeah, a very clear cor correlation. Ben, and then you again, when you, when, you, got... when you do football, if you, if, you, if you watch football, there's no fat guys, basically. <laughs> it's true, right? Yeah. Unless you're watching Sunday that... League. Wow, <laughs> okay. <laughs> a higher level maybe not you know, professional, yeah. none, not right? professional. And, uh, that doesn't happen in rugby you have everything mm. that's mm. also very very interesting as a sport that you can everyone can play yeah, yeah no, no. well Ben you're uh, you're obviously a football football guy so, uh, yeah. so uh, what have what have you seen kind of would you have you been watching any have you watched much rugby in your life no. <laughs> no, no. That was very cool. yeah. Um, I mean, uh, like obviously I played it at school and, and and that and stuff like that. But um, yeah, not gonna lie, I'd, I've not don't not watched it. Um, and I just, I, it's no, I, I mean, it's it's this is show is sort of um, like it's good because everyone has different interests. So it just shows like I'm just completely not bothered about it at all. But Tom's like, I've I've done this since I was little. Like, uh, like I've, I've only recently stopped. Sort of, you know, really sort of, um, like you you obviously clearly had a passion back then for it. Um, but I'm just like, yeah, uh, it's just a nice sport. But like, that's what that's what makes uh, makes it good. Um, but um, yeah, and no, all I can tell you is I used to play it in school, and because I was fast, I used to get past it and just run and to the line and that was it like that that's all i did um but, no, yeah. <laughs> apart from that that's that's all that's that's my um that's my whole experience with rugby uh that, that that's literally it so, so yeah fair enough well uh i'm guessing you were a winger then by the sounds of things you were probably a winger or a, I mean, or a I, I, quick outside center i mean i would i would guess so <laughs> like, I, don't, I, couldn't tell, I couldn't tell you any of the positions. Like this is just how much I don't know about it. Um, it's, well, it's I mean, I, yeah, like um, well, maybe we can learn more over this podcast. Hopefully, yeah, yeah. Well, it'll be a bit like the Formula One uh, podcast. Yes, yeah. well, yeah. Um, so, 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 Lucas, so we've been doing um, with with this podcast. Obviously, it's generally a football one, but we've done a lot mm -hmm. of podcasts where we try and go down our passions. So Ben's kind of like F one. It's kind of his like other sport that he follows. Uh, we've done some on comic books, uh, which I have a bit of an interest in. We've done uh, I'm trying to think of some other ones. That's the most the main two, aren't they? Rug well, we've done. We've already done a, a few rugby ones. Oh, we, we did have one of my mates came on for a rugby one, but I wanted. Uh, this is the first time we've got like a yeah, yeah, yeah. non mate who's who follows rugby to to get on for a proper podcast. Yeah. But um, yeah, yeah, yeah. so yeah, I don't know anything about F one, but we've now done five. F1 podcasts, yeah, yeah. Guests. I think so. That's good. So, I, so, so been, what do you uh, what do you think about the Alonso's defense last Sunday, Ben? Oh, I mean, it, amazing, it was, huh? It, yeah, it was. It was sometimes it was on the edges of acceptability, but it was it was really good defense. But he won he won the race for Ocon. Yeah, for Ocon, yeah, um, 100%. Uh, because Hamilton at the end, I think he was 0.8 behind Vettel. If he had, you know, yeah. got past Alonso a few laps earlier, had a few like he laps. Was getting, he was getting in between two and three seconds a lap. Yeah. And then when he was coming back, I mean, it's just huge. Yeah. Blistering pace. But, I mean, obviously part of that is down to the to the car he's got, but also he's obviously a good driver. But, yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, I guess he's happy that his, um, Vettel got disqualified, didn't he? So he got a second. Which... Apparently, he, he, he had only left... Uh... Uh, 0.3 liters yeah. in the tank. What the yeah, that's... that's nothing for a Formula One car. <laughs> 200 extra yeah. meters, and he would be off. What? The... Yeah, <laughs> I, it, it's it's crazy. When, but I mean, I mean, it's still it's still unfortunate that he's been disqualified. But I guess yeah, well, sad, sad for him actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Hamilton's not complaining, is he? So, <laughs> <laughs> Never. but yeah. See, yeah. this is the beauty of the uh, the previous F1 podcast. I actually know what this means now. This like a whole conversation. I could follow it, right. but uh, if, if you'd if you'd asked me uh, kind of five or one podcast ago, I'd have been sat here just uh, just nodding my head, not really knowing what's going on. Right. But uh, 
yeah. people went around the racetrack, someone won. Yeah, yeah, that's that's someone, someone might have crashed, <laughs> but, uh... Yeah, so I'm now trying to I'm trying to get. We've done five F1 podcasts. I think it's about time we did our finally did our second rugby podcast. You know, get, oh yeah, get you learn right? Yeah. yeah, exactly, exactly. Um, if, here's a good question then, Lucas. If you were to try and get someone like Ben who doesn't really know anything or much about rugby, trying to get them enticed into the sport, what would kind of like the route you go down or the quest or the things you'd get them to watch or, or something like that? It's a funny question because the first thing I would tell him is to follow uh, Sala Rugby in social media <laughs> on our website. <laughs> No, I'm serious because actually we've we've pretty much uh, did our research. Mm. We found out we did our research in the U.S. because we that's our one of our key markets, and mm. we did a research back in 2018, I think it was or 19, about rugby. And uh, a, t- a TV station came back to us and said, "I'm sorry to tell you, but um, only 12 percent of the people actually know uh, the rules of rugby." So we came back and we said, okay, we're really happy about that, those numbers. And he was, I'm sorry, I think you didn't understand, but actually only 12%. And I said, yeah, of course. I mean, we are not counting on that 12%, but we are actually looking for that 80, 88% that's missing, that don't know the rules, that don't know rugby. And the idea is to bring rugby to them with our club, with Salah Rugby. So we created a um, whole network, a whole marketing team, um, that allows us to provide, in this case, for instance, uh, tutorials that explain rugby rules uh, with videos, with our professional players, uh, showing uh, how this should be done, showing different drills, uh, showing examples, and actually, I would say, teaching people what happens on the pitch, uh, what should be done, uh, and slowly uh, getting them to to know rugby a lot better. And... uh, we create that internally. We have a whole video and photo team, for instance, with our professional uh, players that are working together. And also, we we then asked ourselves, how are we going to get this um, shown uh, to the public, to the people? So we focused mainly on, uh, I would say, two things. First, uh, we did a good work on the Facebook, for instance, on our for our team in the past... 10 months, I think, Uh, we went from 1,500 followers to 140,000 today. So our reach, well, yeah, I mean, we want to get out to people. We want to show them what we are doing. And one of the best ways is through social media. Mm -hmm. And then on the other side, uh, we signed uh, about 60 uh, different uh, TV streaming OTTs, uh, uh, contacts to, to get our content syndicated on their channels. So, for instance, two of the biggest uh, TV stations in the US have signed with us. We have also signed a, a contract with um, an app, which is called Viva TV, mm-hmm. um, that they have around six to seven million users. And whenever we are going to play a, a game, they will transmit live they will send a push notification, which we've tried already. And in between 10 to 15 minutes, we will have like 300,000 people watching what we're doing. That's just huge in terms of eyeballs, in terms of outreach. Mm. That's, that's what massive. we are trying to do. Yeah. Wow. So, Ben, you know where, where to find us and you know where yeah. to learn more, more about <laughs> rugby. Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's, it is good, um, like, in terms of, like, the, like the rules, because I, like, that is that is the main stumbling block because I have no idea what any of the rules are. Yeah. Um, and I think uh, it's uh, interesting because I, I never thought of it in that way. Um, sort of before when you were saying like anyone uh, of any different body type can play it, uh, like unlike in football where you need to be trim and stuff. Because like we've said in a previous podcast, like we think why football is sort of uh, got that outreach is because it's so simple and anyone can play it, but I never thought about sort of people that, like not not everyone of like all different body types can play it, which is where rugby can come in, um, and it's got that that out, outreach that way, uh, which is which is interesting. I never never thought of it that way. So yeah, good. Well, yeah, I, I even playing it, I hadn't really thought about it that way. But then looking back at my whole kind of school 
rugby career and uh, club rugby. Um, yeah, uh, it's literally you've literally hit the nail on the head there when you say literally anyone could play it because you anyone. from prop to prop to winger the body shape's completely different, but. Mm. But it's it's it works for everyone. But yeah, Ben, I guess that's now uh, you know how you you uh, you and the F one guys and Dan and stuff have given me a bit of homework uh, to watch Drive to Survive. Yeah, that's well, my homework. Need now. To see that one. Come on, it's a great. Yeah. Show. It, it, I know. I'm a bit busy. Okay? To, it, like, to, even, a, a, on, a, to, even a non but a non F one podcast is saying watch it like you need my to. wife like, is watching it with me and she won't stop see my wife it's so good <laughs> she actually asks me every night okay the new season came out put the next chapter come on go ahead it's my wife <laughs> it's, it, it, is, it is it's that good it's that I've, good I've said, I've, <laughs> remember it's good. in my notes i've said i'm watching it but by, by the time we next do our f1 podcast i've said good. that um, <laughs> but I've said now your homework is to go watch watch uh, the videos that Lucas has been involved in. Yeah, with, yeah. explaining rugby. Absolutely, good homework. For instance, exactly. our last video was an actual trill how to make a pass. Right, as simple as that. A couple minutes explaining the differences between the passes, the different types, let's say, and how you should place your hands. How you should aim your pass, a couple simple things that allow you to understand passing a bit better. And on the next uh, chapters, because we will be um, developing this uh, uh, in time, of course, uh, the idea is to also provide uh, drills to improve your passes with yeah. specific, uh, let's say, things to do, like to, to make you better. Mm, absolutely. I mean, I mean, there's definitely a market there for for that sort of stuff because like you see stuff uh, to do with football like that all the time like you, mm -hmm. you know it's, it's it's really sort of uh um what do you call it a crowded market that for football sure. but for rugby like you just you don't see them so there's, there's there's definitely like some like something there for that for those sort of type of videos though yeah those sort of videos um, yeah, I, I I completely agree with Ben there. Yeah, like the uh, as obviously I've played rugby before. There's not many. All pretty much all my training and knowledge of rugby is from playing it and from my coaches. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but then if with with the uh, videos you're doing, people who want to become professionals could watch your videos to then just even improve their game a bit more as well, which is actually quite a I guess a not a niche market, but quite a, a and not filled market, if that makes sense. Yeah, so it's, it's, so an, it's an untapped. open market. It definitely yeah, it's an untapped market. market. Mm. Yeah, definitely. Um, Get it. <laughs> yeah, you, you've done that. <laughs> you got into it. Um, you had, had a, a major injury. Like, I've talked about my injuries, but you, you also had a major injury uh, where you possibly were said you won't be able to play again. Um, what, a knee injury, am I correct? Yeah. Both uh, ligaments. Yeah. Both ligaments. So, how you happy to talk about how that happened? Yeah, sure. I mean, I kind of knew when you said that you were injured that we were eventually going to hit that. So. <laughs> <laughs> already, already. Um, I mean, shit happens, right? So, hmm. at a game, beginning of a game, tackled a guy, rolled when I tackled. And then I remember I was on the floor trying to stand up and my knee just going like this. Uh, so I remember calling the doctor because he was actually a guy that usually tells you to keep going. So calling him, hey, come strap my knee. He started to look at me and he said, I don't think I can strap this one. I was like, what do you mean? Just strap it so I can keep going. Hmm. He said to me a couple of times that, I should not carry on. And then like something came to me that something was really wrong, I would say. And just... So that was the beginning of our journey that uh, seemed to be pretty long because uh, when I asked the surgeon how long it would take, uh, he said between six and eight months. I've never done it before six. Uh, I was like, okay, this is going to be a long one. Um, again, 
due to my position in the pitch, I need to run quick. It's one of the things I do the best. Uh, any injury can mean a lot of things. So I, I, I was trying to make certain that I was coming back in shape. But also when the fixture came out, um, I knew that uh, the first game that we were actually playing on the season was, to, was again against one of the best teams in Argentina, uh, a game you don't want to miss. Uh, mm. We, I was from a club that was not very big back home, so we didn't have the opportunity to play against them very often. In fact, I think that was one of the first times I played against them in like six years, in seniors. Mm. Which is a long time, right? Mm. And um, I remember getting the calendar and looking at it and counting days, weeks, months. And because, uh, you know, before the actual first game, you have a couple of friendly games or exhibition games. You Yeah. So we knew that the first friendly game was five months and one week after the first, after my surgery. I was like, oh, damn, that this is going to be a tough one. Uh, so I went to my coach, uh, a guy I really appreciate and that I value very much. He became a friend too, not just our coach. And I told him, hey, okay, this is what's happening. Uh, I'm getting surgery on this date. Five months and one week after we start the friendly games. I think it was six months we start the season games. Um, how many games that you need to, me to play before the first game for me to to start that game? To be honest, at that time, I mean, I, I, I didn't have much um, competition, let's say. So I, I was one of the uh, starting players every single game. So I kind of had that leverage. Uh, he knew who I was. We've been playing. I, I, I was... Tryman of the team for 16 years in a row. So, I mean, it's not much to be said, right? Yeah. And uh, he looked at me and he said, I'm sorry, but you need to play all three. I was like, Dude, come on, give me a break. You know, <laughs> that's five five months and one week after after my surgery. He said, I'm sorry, but this is how it is. It's like, fuck. So, I kind of just set that up in my mind so badly that I did everything I could to get there. I remember the surgeon told me, uh, you need to be doing this and this exercise as soon as you can uh, mm. to get it blood flowing, to, to get, don't lose uh, too much uh, muscle. I said, okay. I remember getting out of surgery, being a bit asleep already my room was not ready yet so they put me on on the bed but uh on a corridor and i uh, kind of remembered okay exercises as soon as you can so i, I remember starting in the middle of the corridor people watching me i was like that was crazy right <laughs> but i knew i had no time to lose i had an objective i had something on my mind that i wouldn't lose i was just 100% focused on that and I, I had five months and one week, I will never forget that to get ready for that first friendly game because uh, that's what my coach asked me to do if I wanted to play to make the story short five months and one week after um, I remember I was strapping my knee and going going to, to warm up uh, actually playing 10 minutes but playing he didn't say how much he said <laughs> you need to play three games which i did uh and the first game of the season of course i started so um, i don't know it's it's a tough thing but um key elements that helped me out like like my coach i think he did it on purpose I, I, i'm pretty much sure that if i played only one game he would put me in the first game but if I see it today, uh, which I've discussed with him a couple of times too, he was pushing me. He knew me so well mm. that he knew that he could push me very, very much because I was that 
I am that kind of guy uh, yeah. that I'd rather be pushed uh, to motivate me. And he pushed me very, very hard into the limit, into doing stupid stuff to get ready because uh, he knew he could. And I think thanks to that and to, of course, a couple other things, I would never say what was the thing that got me there because I don't think it's one thing, but it's a conjunction of all of them that I, made me uh, get there in shape for the first game. And I actually thank him to, to push me that way and getting me ready uh, to play. So, mm. yeah, I think that mentality, that winning mentality helps you not only to overcome adversity in general, not just for an injury, but it helps you in any sport. It helps you in any business, in any company. It helps you in life. So it's just a lesson that I'm glad that I had and uh, something, of course, that we are talking today uh, that can probably help others uh, it helped me uh, personally to become a better person, I think, uh, to understand myself a lot better, to to see what my limits were and uh, actually believing that there's no limit. And sometimes if you believe that, then, uh, well, you make it happen. Mm. Yeah, no, it, sh it shows uh, sort of, um, if, you, if, if you do have an objective, sort of the how far uh you people can go to get to that objective and and people surprise themselves how far they can go um because like in reality no one knows how much they can do up until it happens sort of thing so yeah that's cool. they keep saying they keep saying that we use our body like 20 percent of our capacity something like yeah that. Mm, absolutely uh, so i mean if you're if you keep pushing you probably get more mm. uh, so i'm not saying to, to drive it to the limit because i mean mm. of course there's risks and i and i assumed those risks at that time because i knew that i what i was doing was probably not the best idea but i had mm. a physiotherapist that was going me with me all the way my surgeon that was helping me out i mean I, I did everything that they allowed me to do but i just did it as much as i could and as as good as i could so yeah i mean we can all push it a bit further and we can all push mm. it a bit more in every sense mm. you can always give that extra 10 percent and that's sometimes all it takes absolutely yeah cool, cool. that was very inspirational <laughs> yeah. Thanks. So that was very good. No, no, that, was, that was very good. That was very good. Um, wow, that was amazing seeing and listening to that. Uh, that song come back though. <clears throat> I mean, I, I uh, like five and a half, five weeks, five, five months, one week from double ligament. Was it snap? Did they snap. Broke. Yeah. <sighs> I mean, I know professionals who. Take years to come back from that, especially mm. in a football sense. Anyway, um, yeah, but yeah. But uh, that, that year was the year where Falcao took like eight months to come back and missed. Uh, I, can't remember, I can't remember which one, but I think he missed either a Copa America or uh, or even the, the the World Cup. He missed one because of that same injury mm. that I had, and he took at least eight months to come back. I was like, yeah. shit, if he could make it. <laughs> nah. I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, everyone, everyone, I guess everyone's different, aren't they? But, like, uh, yeah, no, it's um, still it's still impressive. Um, but, I mean, I, I was lucky enough, uh, sort of, when I was playing football, not to get at many, well, that serious of injury. Um but I mean, I obviously yeah, you had to get a little like little injuries here and there, but nothing ever that severe. So I mean, I I couldn't possibly sort of think it like what it would be like because I've never experienced it. Um, 
but yeah, no, it's 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 cool, cool. Mm. Oh yeah. Um, well, I, I loved how in, in your story you spoke about your the the, the medic who you'd come over and he just he just normally was that's how you to play on. That's a it's a very rugby thing. I completely get that. It's <laughs> like you you get you get hit. Like, I, so my first two concussions, I played. I think the first one was about fifty minutes in. Finished the game. Uh, because you just don't, you just don't realize you got the adrenaline pumping around. You just like, oh, I want to finish this game. The um, second one was, uh, I think, sixty minutes in. And again, just didn't really clock that I'd hit my head that hard because you just want to play. You play on, and then the uh, the third time was the one where it kind of went. It, the, I got knocked out, so it kind of stopped me from <laughs> from from playing. Carrying on, but, uh, yeah, no, exactly. Um, so. No, yeah, that 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 made me uh, laugh a little bit inside. It's the whole, I'll uh, oh, just strap it up, it'd be fine, or just run it off. is is a very happens all the time in rugby, which is uh, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which well, is always well, the good fun. Though. I I had a couple myself, so I understand what you what you mean. Uh, mm. That's probably the reason why I use a helmet when I play, for instance. Mm. So I had a couple I never since, did. since I was since I was a kid, and uh, it actually helps. Uh, to wear yeah. a helmet, so I I do encourage everyone to do it. I mean, nothing to lose. No, mm. it can save you a couple of bad days. In my case, mm. so, yeah, no, yeah, it's a couple, a couple of days after you've been concussed, you kind of like you just just sleep. I, I remember just sleeping most day the couple of days after the concussions. But yeah, uh, yeah. but yeah, actually, I, I, I had a, I had two gone. or three that were pretty bad. Mm. So for two or three days. I could not remember what I did 10 minutes ago. <laughs> so I, I kept asking the same questions. I kept uh, asking people what they were doing, uh, my family. I mean, I knew who they were, but I just you just have your like short memory that's off, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, after that, of course, uh, my mom came and he, she said, you either quit rugby, which was not an option she knew that uh or you wear a helmet you say okay i'll take option b b go ahead <laughs> fair, <laughs> yeah, enough. fair enough yeah. that, is, that is definitely fair enough um <laughs> yeah that that people should be wearing helmets and uh con well there's the the new rules i know in england anyway uh no contacts yeah. kind of becoming later and later in oh. in in school but like they're doing touch rugby for a longer just to try and prevent that with um prevent injuries from a young age and yeah. that's also happening with uh with football isn't it ben with yeah, the, the headers you're only allowed to do a maximum of a 10 is it high impact headers a week in training so they there are that like because i think that was um they did a, um a research paper on it and that was the the findings from that um led to the limit on the heading so they are they are doing a lot, lot of, like continue to do more and more research on sort of the effect yeah. of concussions and heading on the ball and on sort of memory and like like even uh, memory in later life sort of how it affects it then and stuff so yeah yeah, they, yeah, no, right. yeah. however it? tom i do think it's i don't think it's the best idea actually to play touch rugby for such a long period of time because what i would rather have is people uh tackling better so mm. in my opinion the sooner you start the better you become in, into that technique this mm. is very personal right so mm. i rather have them playing but what we do certainly need to avoid is high tackles I mean, and that's being enforced very hard lately which i appreciate because mm. the the worst ko's are are due to high tackles you you get a guy at full speed, right slam you on your jaw, and then you're off. I mean, there's just no, yeah. no other way. And you see that on, at any sport. You know, mm. Guy running at full speed with his shoulder on your face, I mean, that's nothing you can do. And I think they're doing mm. a good, good job on that end to, to, to lower the, the, the line of tackling and just being more severe. I mean, today, if you do that, it's a red card and that, that's it. There's no discussion, yeah. which... My sense, that's perfect. Well, no, yeah, no, it's definitely perfect. And also, as you said, like uh, tackle technique as well is is in a couple, couple of people get actually knocked out from going into tackles the wrong way 
which is this is a big thing as well. Um, I think also I think a, a personal thing with me was I feel I think people will tackle worse when they're scared of making the tackle. Let's say, Absolutely. whereas for me it was once I once that kind of when you're growing up once you get rid of that fear. That's when you start to tackle better, you make better tackles, and you're less likely to, to injure yourself. Which is, I think, something that needs to be taught as well. Is yeah. you're more likely to injure yourself if you go into it half-heartedly. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I agree. Definitely. Cool. Okay. Well, um, so you, you said you mentioned you you used to play football. Is that is that uh, soccer or American football? No, soccer. Yeah, so you, guys are, you guys, you guys are English, right? Yeah, yeah, no, I was just double checking. Wow. It's, uh, I know, I know, it's it's uh, South America, but the, the they still call it football. <laughs> yes. yes. Well, uh, um, as a football channel, who do you support then? Uh, which which country? Because I do support my uh, River Plate back in Argentina. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's my club. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I do like it very much. I mean, playing it, uh, I've played it. Not professionally, of course, but uh, with my friends for a long period of time. And I, I actually, when I was young, I was like 10 to 12, I can't remember. I played one year at, at River. Uh, but the the atmosphere was very different from what I, ha- I was having at rugby. It just didn't fly with me at that yeah. time. I remember the first day I came to the changing room. I Imagine yourself, an 11-year-old kid. I was, I mean, it's just there to have fun, right? Mm-hmm. I loved fo- I loved football. I loved hitting the ball. I loved scoring. So I just went to have some fun. So first training, there were like sixty people in the changing room. As soon as I go in with a happy face and my a smile, um, people started looking at me and like, "Who's this kid?" Mm-hmm. I just came in, you know. And after 10, 20 seconds, probably, a guy stood up, came straight to me, and said. What what position do you play? Like that, an eleven year old kid. I was like, I play nine seven. I said he looked at me. Watch out, because our nine is that guy sitting over there. It's like, jeez, <laughs> like, like if I was stealing someone's place, you know? Yeah. I did it over the year, but then after that, I just decided to come back to rugby, and uh, so that was it. I, I then for a couple more years I just combined to both things mm-hmm. uh, when I was young and then a couple more uh, during the weekends I used to play football on on Saturdays uh, rugby on Sundays for uh, two or yeah. three years mm-hmm. but once I got older it just didn't fly I mean I was, I was fucked up uh, for every game just not not worth it yeah it was too much. <laughs> Yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So I'm, I'm guessing you, uh, you're happy with uh, the Cop- Argentina's Copa America win, then? Uh, Finally, yeah. <laughs> you seen that? I mean, Jesus, it took us long enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I actually, <laughs> uh, yeah, stayed up to watch it, mate. Uh, it was, it was yeah. good. Um, good. Yeah. But uh, yeah, it was the first trophy since 1993, and uh, exactly it, what. Uh, <laughs> And is it four four finals since since then? Two thousand seven, two thousand oh, twenty fourteen World World Cup, and then yeah. 2015, 2016, lost all the finals. Lost all the finals. Yeah, and it's amazing but, how Messi Messi had no trophies with Argentina. Yeah. It's just something you we, you could never imagine. Like it's is is uh sort of um, like it's bamboozling really because i mean the two times that they lost in 2015 2016 it was on penalties to chile and it's like you come come so close uh, okay. it's just been so unlucky mm-hmm. but i guess that's just that's just sport uh sometimes but he's finally done it He's finally yeah, done it. Finally, yeah. <laughs> uh, and if you couldn't tell from that, uh, Ben is a massive, massive Messi fanboy. I'm not. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not yes, you are. Like, yes, you are. You are ecstatic. Who would it? Yeah. No, no, yeah. I don't. I'd say, I'd say Messi over Ronaldo, but I'm not quite yeah. on the same level of, of Ben. Who I, prefer, I prefer Messi a lot more than Ronaldo. I'm you not saying Ronaldo's... 
a bad player, but like I just I just prefer watching Messi play for the the way Messi plays. So, 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 yeah. so do I, but maybe I'm I'm just biased. <laughs> maybe, maybe. No, maybe. It's not. It's not bias. It's just. It's just football intelligence. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, okay, I agree. Yeah. We just. We just, <laughs> we just but yeah. Oh, no, it's, gone, it's good. We managed to go forty-five um, minutes without you lagging, Ben. Oh, that's a shame. He's back. He's back. Yeah, yeah. You, you like. You like for the first. I mean, it's forty-five minutes is pretty good going for us sometimes. <laughs> what, what did you miss? Yeah, I, I don't know. You just. He stopped speaking for a second, but it was like a uh, 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 kind of yeah. Oh, that's, right. that's what I got. Yeah, yeah. yeah no, <laughs> uh, no, I was just, I was just saying, um, uh, what do you call? Uh, it was Emmy Martinez, sort of. Um, he, he was sort of the uh, the missing piece in in some ways because I mean, I think Messi even said that he's. Basically, won in the Copa America. I mean, obviously, De Maria scored the goal, but uh, Martinez saved three penalties in the penalty shootout in yeah. the semi final. So, yeah. so, you know, he's uh, definitely, definitely helped. <laughs> definitely stepped I mean, up. Yeah. Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, so, you guys are big fans of football, both of you. Uh, actually, yes. we've signed a, a deal with. Um, football club in here uh, our neighbours it's called the uh, Bergerac football because okay. um, we believe that rugby and football have no 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 reason why not to work together right mm. and uh, some people don't understand it and uh, but again we, we were lucky to approach them and to to discuss for a bit and for instance we've built uh, a boutique so a shop, an actual shop at the Bergerac Airport, but mm. in conjunction, so in, together, so we have mm. both things uh, at that shop that you can buy in there. And that's why do I mention that? Because um, we've funded a company uh, lately, so the last uh, two months, uh, which is called Challenger X. Um, that's designed to to help clubs out there. Uh, no matter what sport or no matter where in the world they are, uh, to tackle their biggest problems. We've identified lots of problems that an, I would say, amateur or semi-professional club has at that level, uh, like marketing, like branding, uh, like um, monetization, uh, merchandise. There's lots of issues that are recurrent and every club has uh, the same problems. So we funded a com this company to 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 solve those problems. I, would, I wouldn't say for them, but with them. Mm. Um, uh, so if you guys are big football fans uh, and there's lots of um, football teams or players that would like to to be a part of, uh, and actually, if you guys are are in the UK, um, the company we funded. Roughly two months ago, uh, is probably going to be listing at the Aquis Exchange in London uh, mm. in the next coming weeks. So okay, it's pretty pretty big, pretty quick. Mm. Uh, cool. So there's lots of things happening. Uh, we are at what we call a market grab. So it's first come, first serve, um, mm. and we are actually uh, aiming for at least a hundred teams before the end of the year. Uh, we know we can do that, uh, and we have actually san signed already uh, some agreements that will put us in that position, if not a lot further further down the line. And uh, again, if you if we can help uh, someone out, that's the the objective mm -hmm. of the company, and uh, there's lots to be done. But the main idea is whenever you see a small club. Um, an amateur club or a semi-professional club, he needs to be looking exactly the same as a professional club. There's mm. no reason why that club cannot at least look the same as a professional one. And mm. um, and that's the actually the spirit of the company. And what we say is turning Davids into Goliaths. So we take the small mm, and yeah. we make them look big. Uh, and then we do everything that's necessary to just take them to the next level, push them down, down the line. Again, we come back to 
pushing and to pushing the limits and uh mm. that, that that's the story about the company and that's uh why we funded it why we uh be, we believe that there's really a, a huge market we've tried it already we we made our proof of concept through uh Salo rugby our ro- local rugby club again uh, with the social media we went from 1500 followers to 140k uh, a couple of weeks ago and uh it's something we could just help to every team develop and uh, get that outreach and get that uh, conversion rates, eyeballs, you call it. Mm. Wow. Totally. Yeah. Well, um, if any of our viewers have any, if, if they were, anyone watching this would want to look into that company that's looking at improving mm-hmm. the amateur semi pros, where should they go again? They should go to cxsports.io. And uh, if not, they can uh, contact me through LinkedIn. Probably it's the, the easiest. Uh, I'll be more than willing to just guide them through. Cool. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, uh, it's, it's, it is interested sort of uh, the sort of collaboration between the football and, and the rugby because um, like uh, they both developed from the same, same sport. Um, so, that hence rugby is called rugby football yeah. or, it, mm-hmm. or it used to be. So they like, obviously they are, they are different sports now, but they developed from the same sort of uh, yeah. base. So uh, it is, it is interesting like, that there is because of that, there is no reason why they can't obviously uh, they can't collaborate on, you know, things outside of the pitch. Like, mm-hmm. yeah, totally. it is interesting. And yeah. if you see the clubs, they all have the same problems. So there's no reason mm. why we won't put ourselves together to solve those problems. And it's not just football and rugby. We've we had teams uh, coming from tennis, badminton, uh, even mm. taekwondo clubs. I don't know why, but they are contacting us to just mm. help them out, help us out. How can you help us out? And that's the that's becoming. More increasingly um, effective, and uh, there's lots to be done. Cool, cool. Yeah. Well, I feel like this is actually quite a good time to start talking about uh, Unicorn Incubator, which is obviously the company you work with uh, or slash for. Um, what what is uh, an incubator accelerator uh, for for someone that wouldn't know? So the idea is to help you and work together with companies, startups in this case, uh, to achieve their objectives and to, how to say that, but accompany them down the line and through the right path and Mm -hmm. to put our um, marketing services, investor relationship services, to the company that we are uh, working with, to our clients, to help them uh, achieve much more than what they were expecting. Mm-hmm. Um, we have a couple of things uh, that we need to, do, to, to probably clarify. Um, we work first. Some, firstly, we we work with only tech companies when it comes to our actual incubator, mm-hmm. um, and then we ask to have three things always. So we ask them to have a proof of concept, a couple clients, and um, that they have convinced at least uh, a small investor that can be their parents. What do we intend is to, that the company needs to be in a position already that what we are bringing into the table can actually help them. If they are further down the line, if they're way down the line, it's too hard to, not too hard, but it's not the, our specialty to help them accelerate once at that time. And if you have just an idea in your head, mm. because the risk is too big, uh, they can good way people, so that lots of people can work through that, but we focus part and um, we can we can do that uh, uh, in a very effective way once we get into that certain level 
cool. Fair yeah. enough. Yeah. Um, no, it's, oh, go on then. Go on, then. Uh, I was just going to say, um, uh, like, in terms of sort of the, um, like, the uh, tech and all that sort of stuff, um, like, is, is it um, sort of... Uh, then so you, you like to sort of uh, get in like what what so in terms of what the development of the company to reach that like next level they'll already be sort of part way down the line and then that's when you sort of that's what when you your services would 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 help because if it's too early on like there's too much of a risk if it's too late on the the they've gone past that stage where your services would help sort of thing not Really, uh, since we come from a digital marketing space, we can do a lot in terms of mm. SEO, article syndication, ASO. Uh, today, we we control more than 5,000 keywords uh, ranked number one, for instance, at the Google Play and, AA, and IO, iOS. Um, mm. So we can do, in fact, many of our clients, not for the incubator, for but for our marketing services, are public companies. Uh, mainly in the U.S. and in Canada. Um, but yeah, we, we do work with, I would say, a wide vi variety of companies. Uh, one of our recent um, clients uh, was uh, is XR Applied, they're called. So we took the company when they were just starting, um, back in 2020, so like roughly 15 months ago, basically. Uh, they were just uh, at a seeding round. They had a, a small proof of concept, a couple of clients, but it was really new. Uh, and uh, last week, it was last Friday, I think, they went public in Canada. So we've accompanied them all the way, and uh, they, they are currently listed at the CSE uh, in Canada. So, yeah. And that doesn't mean we will stop working with them. Quite the mm. opposite. We will keep working with them and uh, handling their marketing, uh, handling the, the investor relationships for them or with them, basically, just to keep growing. I mean, there's, there's no limit. Mm. Absolutely. So so when, when would you say is the is the best time for sort of, well, just any time for like your service to be used? Or is there a particular time or...? Basically, I would say anytime. Every mm. company needs uh, marketing services. Every mm. this uh, research that has been done that every fundraise that a company does, on average, they spend at least fifty percent of what they get in marketing. Mm. So there's oh. always uh, something to work on, and. Uh, and one of the, one of the things that we always say and we insist is, it's not about uh, how to do something, but it's about who uh, is the right person to do it. So, mm. as a company, you don't need to be doing everything because uh, you would probably not be the best at that. Uh, of course, mm. when things when things need to get done, someone should do it, and that's not a problem. Mm. But um, if you can find a specialist that can help you out. Why not? Yeah, absolutely. We've been on the, our funder has been on the digital marketing space for the past 28 years. So he probably knows a couple of things that you don't. <laughs> or, uh, <laughs> yeah. And, and not everyone's perfect, right? I mean, uh, we all have our um, defaults. And uh, we, again, it's like we we've, we've said at the beginning, uh, we, we need to find the skill sets of, of, of every team member and mm. put them uh, into the for the team for, for its whole benefit that's how we succeed absolutely what is it that you you do within unicorn incubator like specifically like just you it's a couple of things but um my position would be the global team leader so i'm just managing every team basically uh yeah but i'm also the business development director so i do uh, and i'm one of my biggest focuses on the business development side. Mm. Is, is that is, is that more like are you more into the the business side or like rather than the marketing side? Obviously, you know 
about yes. both. Or is that more? Yeah. Yeah. yeah I'm, I just, we, we have our marketing director, for instance, and he, right. I just, you know, I trust him and I just, I mean, he handles probably most of the part marketing side. Of course, right. I, I can be consulted eventually if we need something, but yeah. uh, again, it's about the right people at the right place. And he's much more capable than I to decide on the marketing side. Uh, so, so be it. Uh, mm. So I, ju I just have other things to do and that, yeah. that's uh, totally right. Totally yeah. acceptable. I mean, I so, don't so, need to be doing everything. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So, so is it um, like in terms of sort of the business side is, are you, so obviously there's the marketing stuff, are you all, all a lot more in contact with the with the companies who come to you that and that sort of thing and then you'll relay that to the marketing team and stuff like that obviously they'll speak yeah. with them as well but yeah but, yeah, yeah i'm very yeah. much more into the the companies and the relationships and the investor side right uh, cool. yeah how do you um obviously you are a professional rugby player still as well how do you manage to juggle kind of this whole business as well with the the professional rugby and and, and not kind of get overwhelmed well, one takes you out of the other one. So in terms of being overwhelmed, it actually helps. But unluckily, I, I still haven't found the formula to, to make days a bit longer because I would certainly appreciate a couple more hours a day. Uh, okay. But I mean, that's just the beauty about what, I mean, if you love what you do, it's a lot easier, right? So I do enjoy very much what I'm doing. Uh, and that just makes me want to, to keep going. And uh, I, I enjoy what I'm doing. So when, you, when, you, when you're doing what you're passionate about, which in this case, I'm passionate about business and rugby, it's perfect. Great combination. Okay, cool. Probably can ask for anything anything more. Um, as we start wrapping up, there was a question I've, I've kind of had that I wanted to ask you is... Shoot. <laughs> this is more of a jokey question, to be honest. Go guess, ahead. guess which clubs me and Ben support. We don't support the same club, football club players, <laughs> but uh, guess, guess which football club we support. Both in England. Both yeah. in England, yeah. I think you're a Chelsea guy, Tom. Okay. Uh, and for and Ben, I would, I would say a Manchester guy for you, Ben. Yeah, which one though? <laughs> <laughs> it's hard to say, <laughs> but I wasn't long, right? Yeah, yeah, no, you, it's, you're it's spot, spot on so far. You're spot on. Uh, I would say Manchester City for you, Ben. <laughs> he smashed it. He's absolutely smashed it. Smashed I named it, it both. Yeah, yeah. He smashed it. He, maybe he's done some research beforehand that we don't know about. Yeah. No, <laughs> I, I, I promise you guys that I didn't. Uh, I think I think he's just good. He's good with the accents. I think so. Must be. No, not yeah. really. No. <laughs> <laughs> or it's or it's the fact it could be the fact we're called the Blue Podcast. Uh, Chelsea is splattered everywhere, uh, and I do I've done the background, so that's probably why it's there as much more than any other club. Hands up to that. But <laughs> yeah. that, that is the case. Yeah, but then, <laughs> but then, who do you pick? Is it Tom or Ben for Chelsea? That's a hard call. Um. <laughs> I see. Well, maybe the guy who's got a Manny accent's probably uh, from Manchester. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's, that's <laughs> maybe. Right. Yeah. But um, Ben, is there anything uh, else you want to touch on? Um, not that I can think of. Um, Lucas, do you have any questions for us or anything you want to chat about? Not really, guys. I just appreciated the time that we spent together, and thank you for the opportunity to to speak to you and your audience. It was mate, it was an it was an absolute pleasure. Um before we I say like oh, the outro and all that, do, is there anything you want to shout out before before we uh, wrap it up, Lucas? Oh, I think we've covered pretty much. Thank you. Brilliant. Well uh thank you guys for watching. Uh that was a really interesting and good that's just enjoyable chat to uh, to have, Lucas. Thank you very much. Um finally managed to get a an outside source rugby person to tag chat up chat with, which was uh which was nice for me. Um, but if you guys are new to the channel, uh, please do hit that subscribe button uh, to not miss a video. That really helps us out. If you enjoyed the video, please do give a like and uh, check out the merch, as I said at the start of the, the video, which is uh, something we're trying to get out there. Just, you know, it's like it's 
me and Ben actually make absolutely sod from it. It's just we want to get our uh, our brand out there as much as possible. But uh, yeah, uh, Lucas, any links and stuff we'll have in the description. Uh, and uh, I guess you guys can enjoy a golden show on the channel tomorrow. Goodbye. Cool. Thank you, guys.